So this is a uh, proof that Gadadhar Pandit was so dear to Lord Chaitanya that those who take shelter of his lotus feet can attain Radha Krishna. It is, it is said by Sridhar Swami, he poetically describes that Gadadhar Pandit is the rem, what, what is Gadadhar Pandit is after Krishna takes away, he steals away the bhava of Shrimati Radharani and he appears on the full moon day as Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Then what remains is Gadadhar Pandit who appears on the Amavasya. And he also goes on to describe that Gadadhar Pandit's life was exemplary about this separation from the Lord. And he says, Shridhar Maharaj says that Gadadhar Pandit, this is a poetic expression, he did not worship the Lord with flowers, but rather he worshipped the Lord with tears. It doesn't mean that he did not offer flowers, but it just means that he, had, he was going to such intense separation that he was worshipping the Lord with his tears. Gadadhar Pandit had to go through a lot of ecstatic separation symptoms. We may not understand that when we go through, when we study Gadadhar Pandit's um, story. For example, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was leaving Navadvip to go to Puri, Gadadhar Pandit wanted to accompany him and Mahaprabhu would not allow him. And how could Gadadhar Pandit live without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It was just impossible for him to even imagine being without Lord Chaitanya. In fact, even for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it was impossible to be without Gadadhar Pandit. And later on, somehow Gadadhar Pandit, he tolerated a little while of separation and then all the devotees went to Jagannath Puri and Gadadhar Pandit along with them went to Jagannath Puri. And there, Mahaprabhu wanted to leave to Vrindavan. Although there was a beautiful time together in Puri with amazing, wonderful pastimes. For instance, Gadadhar Pandit would study Srimad Bhagavatam, read Bhagavatam to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it is said that he used to read hundred times pastimes of certain cantos. For example, he would read Dhruva Maharaj's pastime hundred times to Lord Chaitanya. Prahlad Maharaj's pastimes was read hundred times by Gadadhar Pandit to Lord Chaitanya. Still, when he wanted to, when Mahaprabhu wanted to leave Puri and go to Vrindavan, Gadadhar Pandit pleaded him, please, I cannot live without you. Please allow me to come with you. And because Gadadhar Pandit had taken Kshetra Sanyas, he had taken a vow to never leave the Puri Dham. So Mahaprabhu told him, Gadadhar Pandit Yabe Sangeta Chalila Kshetra Sanyas Nachadiha Prabhu Nishedila Prabhu Nishedila He forbid, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu forbid Gadadhar Pandit to accompany him to Vrindavan. And this completely destroyed Gadadhar Pandit's happiness. At the same time increased the loving ecstatic symptoms as well. And then while Mahaprabhu and Gadadhar Pandit were in Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya showed him special mercy by manifesting, by uh, revealing to Gadadhar Pandit the Tota Gopinath deity. So when Gadadhar Pandit was worshipping this Tota Gopinath deity, after Mahaprabhu left, he was um, so much drowned in separation from Mahaprabhu that he was getting old very, very quickly. So he became, he reached old age very quickly. And um, he was unable to worship Tata Gopinath in the normal state. So he actually requested the Gopinath deity to help him serve. And we all know the famous pastime how Tata Gopinath sat down so that Gadadhar Pandit could worship him. So in this way, the, the separation uh, and the service is simultaneously um, exhibited by Gadadhar Pandit. When, when uh, Gadadhar Pandit 
requested Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please let me come with you. He even demonstrated certain rebellious nature of not wanting to be without Mahaprabhu. And th there is like a few verses which describes that very special rasa. It's a loving affair. It's, it's described by Prabhupada as the loving affair. So we will read some of those verses now. Pandit kahe yahan tumi se nila chala Kshetra sanyas mora yauka rasa tala It's a heavy one. When Mahaprabhu said, no, you've taken Kshetra sanyas, you have to remain here. Gadadhar Pandit told him, look, wherever you are, that is Jagannath Puri. To hell with my so-called vow of Kshetra sanyas. And Mahaprabhu was not, was not pleased and he said, what about Gopinath Seva? Prabhu kahe inhar kara gopi nat sevana Pandit kahe koti seva tvatpada darshana When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, you have to remain here and worship Tata Gopinath, Gadadhar Pandit said, when, when one renders service to your lotus feet, what is the need of worshipping any other deity? In fact, it was very difficult even for Mahaprabhu to request him to force Gadadhar Pandit to keep his vow. And it is said, Ei Mata Prabhu Tomhar Vichedan Sahiya Tomar Pratigya Raksha Kaila Yatna Kariya So with great tolerance, with great separation, Mahaprabhu was controlling his own feelings and inspiring Gadadhar Pandit, please keep up your vow. Don't break this. Why? It is also described that Mahaprabhu requested all his devotees to keep up to their promises, promised duties. Prabhu lagi dharma karma chadhe bhakta gana bhakta dharma hani prabhu nahaya sahana All devotees would abandon all kinds of duties for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sake. Yet, the Lord did not like devotees giving up their promised duties. This is Mahaprabhu's uh, mood. And at the end of this section, of this particular intimate dealings between Gadadhar Pandit and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it is said, please listen to this verse carefully. Premera vivarta iha shune ye jana achir mile ye tanre chaitanya charana. All these are the misgivings of loving affairs. Whoever listens to these incidents gets the shelter of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus feet very soon. Haribo! And the last. Days, uh, we know that Mahaprabhu, I mean, we have heard, um, although it is not recorded in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is written in one of the diaries of a devotee in uh, Puri. Um, Mahaprabhu is said to have entered into the Stota Gopinath deity, which Gadadhar Pandit was worshipping. And it is also said that Gadadhar Pandit himself also served Tata Gopinath deity until his departure from this material world and he also is said to have entered into the same Tota Gopinath deity. There's a beautiful song written by Srila Bhakti you know, Thakur in glorification of Sri Sri Gaur Bhakti Vinod Thakur was a very ardent worshipper of Sri Gaur Gadadhar. In fact, he established the worship of Gaur Gadadhar. He established deities of Gaur Gadadhar all over Navadvip. In Yoga Pit, we can see the deity of Gaur Gadadhar established by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. We can see many temples with Gaur Gadadhar deity. And this is a beautiful song by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Smara Gaura Gadadhara Keli Kalam Bhava Gaura Gadadhara Pakshacharam Shruno Gaura Gadadhara Charukatam Bhaja Gotrumakana Nakunja Vidham So this is one of the paragraphs of the 
Baja Godru Makana Nakunja Vidum. Bhakti Vinod Thakur glorifies. Remember Gaur Gadadhar during the time of their pastimes. Meditate on Gaur Gadadhar, the divine couple, the par excellence of beauty. Hear beautiful discussions on the topic of Gaur Gadadhar and worship them in the forest grove of Godruma, bathed in the light of the moon. Bhaktivinoda Thakur composed several hundreds of songs. In fact, every day we sing many songs written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Even Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari is written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The Guru Puja song is written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. The Gora Arati song Jaya Jaya Gora Chande is also written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And our favorite of all, Sharira Avidya Jal, is also written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So there are several songs we every day recite that is written by Bhakti Vinod Thakur and it is amazing. So many hundred, oh, it's working. So many hundreds of years later, this great Acharya songs, we're still singing. So who is Bhakti Vinod Thakur? What is special about this Acharya? We will go through a few points on this. This is a letter by Srila Prabhupada and he writes, I'm greatly pleased to see this collection of songs composed by B Thakur Bhakti Vinoda, Narottam Das Thakur and other great Acharyas of the Gaudiya Vaishnava community. Songs composed of the Acharyas are not ordinary songs. When chanted by pure Vaishnavas who follow the rules and regulations of Vaishnava character, they are actually effective in awakening the Krishna consciousness dormant in every living entity. Srila Prabhupada also said in another place how these Vaishnava Acharya songs, they are like thunderbolt and they can destroy mountains of sins that a living being, living entity cannot even imagine to create. So this is the power of Vaishnavacharya songs and Bhakti Vinod Thakur is famously known for his songs. But there are many more things about Bhakti Vinod Thakur. One point that uh, I felt personally relevant about Bhakti Vinod Thakur when I was reading uh, about his autobiography uh, excerpts, um, he went through so many unimaginable austerities. So reading some of the austerities such as he, his, his family went through great financial crisis. They entered huge debts. Um, his, his mother and his sister, they were submerged in poverty. And even he lost three of his brothers to cholera. And his father also passed away. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur was only 11 years old. And then he was married at 11 years old to a five-year-old girl. I heard they would play together. And the mother of Bhaktivinoda Thakur had hoped that by this marriage, his karma will improve. And then the poverty may be gone. But it did not happen. Also, the grandfather, that is uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's mother's fathers, had a big property. And they were very, very uh, rich, Kayasta families, and everybody knew them as very wealthy. So when poverty hit them, nobody would come to help because everybody was thinking they have a lot of money. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes in his, in his diary, and he says that because everybody thought my mother had wealth, jewelry, I could not ask help to anybody. And he was a teenager who had to handle the depths and the poverty and so many difficulties. His father died, his brothers died, and then even the wife, after delivering the first child, of course after several years, not when she was five, and then even she died. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur, when he was a teenager, he became a widower, losing half of his village also to cholera when in Ula, U-L-U, is that how you pronounce it? So in the, in the village of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, half of the village died due to this disease. So 
when I was going through that, I just thought, am I complaining about my problems in life? <laughs> Maybe I should be more aware of um, what great acharyas have gone through because it is very common to think that, oh, what pure devotees know what material difficulties and family difficulties can be. They knew a lot. And we can see the reflection of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's realization about family life. He later on got married and he actually had 13 children after the, the he got married to Bhagavati Devi and he had 13 children from her. In total, there were 14 children of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. So he knew what family life and responsibility and difficulties were. And it, it helps us to go through these difficulties of the acharyas helps us to be grateful for our situation. We are in the Dham, we have association of devotees, and so on. It, it is also very interesting that Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he was only five years old when he started going to school, and he was so eager to learn that although he was going to a Bengali school, during the lunch time, the five-year-old Kedarnath Datta, that was his name, he would actually run to this English school during lunch time so he could actually learn some English. So the headmaster saw that the small boy was so eager to learn. So they actually shifted him from the Bengali school to the English school. Of course, later they soon left from there and they had to go back to Kolkata and there were another series of difficulties. Uh, Kedarnath Datta, he wanted to study, but at the same time there was a poverty pulling him on one side. So much depth, he didn't know what to do. And he was very much interested to study Western philosophy, Christianity. He even studied Islam. He studied Quran. He, he, was, very, he was a very voracious reader and researcher. He, the Lord had planned that he would know everything. He was a very good, um, later on as a Acharya, he was very good in environmental scanning. He could know what was going on, who was into what, what is Western philosophy, what is Eastern philosophy, what is the difference. He would synthesize everything in such practical ways that he would impress anyone. And he spoke very perfect English. Uh, one very important contribution of Bhaktivinoda Thakur is the establishing of Namahatta. There is this book of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Godruma Kalpatavi. This is actually written initially as newsletters, and later on uh, it became a book. The mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda descends through their devotees. Devotees who have received Krishna Prema by the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are able to distribute this love of Godhead. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur illustrates this process by using an analogy, the transcendental marketplace of the holy name of the Lord. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was very determined to just give a little glimpse of his daily schedule. While he was in Jagannath Puri, he actually, uh, after, after all the poverty years, then he went back to Puri and he became a, a teacher there, English teacher, and then he became a headmaster. And then later on he was married to Bhagavati Devi and the daughter was born. Then he actually got into governmental services and gradually he became the district magistrate. And he had many uh, special dreams indicating him to come and stay in Navadvip. And later on there was also the dream to go to Jagannath Puri we will not have time to get into all the amazing stories, but to just indicate how determined he was at that time to actually establish um, a revolutionary movement was almost impossible under the English rule. Um, there is one particular pastime which really proves the determination of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. When he was transferred to Jagannath Puri, there was this king who actually had taken away a lot of money 
and he was um, enjoying on his own. And when Bhakti Vinod Thakur came there, he actually put a very tricky and very clever uh, resolution that he said to the king, you have to offer, if I'm not mistaken, 52 times. Is that correct? 52, 32, what was that? 52? I'm sorry. I, 52 times boga offering to Lord Jagannath. And when the king started doing this, very soon all his money finished. <laughs> And then, of course, the king became very angry and he started to uh, set up some tantrics uh, so that he could destroy Bhaktivinoda Thakur and so that Bhaktivinoda Thakur would leave and he could start collecting again taxes and start enjoying. But what actually happened was after many days of performing this tantric yagya, the last day of the yagya, instead of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, the own son of the king died. <laughs> this was the determination of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Um, there was uh, another instance in Jagannath Puri as well. There was this uh, Bishaki Sena. He was the self-proclaimed false Mahavishnu incarnation. So he was calling himself to be an incarnation of Mahavishnu and he was also a tantric with long hair and he was deceiving a lot of people and cheating a lot of people. And uh, one of the magistrates who was in that area requested Bhaktivinoda Thakur to help him to teach a lesson to this Vishaki Sena. And Vishaki Sena was so powerful that everybody in the village was afraid of him. Nobody would mess with him. Nobody would even go near him. Because he, he could like make fire come out of his head and do all these kind of magic tricks and people would become very scared. So when Bhaktivinoda Thakur approached him, Bishaki Sena bluffed and uh, glorified himself of all his tantric powers and he showed a little bit of magic tricks but it didn't influence Bhaktivinoda Thakur like it influenced all the other simple people. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, very nice, very nice, all your uh, tantric power, very good, very good, please come to Jagannath temple, have darshan of Jagannath. That was the, the trigger point and immediately Bishaki Sena said, why should I come to Jagannath temple? That's just a log of wood. I am God. Why should I come and have darshan of this log of wood? And Bhaktivinoda Thakur became very, very angry. Then he realized he's such a bogus person. He's creating political conspiracies and scaring people. Then he immediately put a trial case against this Bishaki Sena. And after staying 12 days in the prison, Bishaki Sena did not eat. He did not drink and he started to do all these tantric spells against Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And what actually happened was during the trial, the daughter of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, seven years old, she became so sick that she was about to die. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur's determination was not disturbed. He continued praying, Gopinath, Mama Nivedana Suno. And Gopinath heard. Gopinath hears. <laughs> when when Bhaktivinoda Thakur sings, Gopinath hears. In one day, the daughter became all right. Then when he went back to the trial, this Bishaki Sena was there. He didn't know the, the cure, the, the, that she was cured, but he only knew that he had done something bad. So he was screaming in the courtroom, saying, I've already shown my power. There is yet to come. Beware. Don't mess with me. He was saying this in the courtroom. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was like, whatever. <laughs> then the, the, the court case continued and this Bishaki Sena would still not eat, would still not drink and he kept performing his evil spells and tantric stuff. The day of the hearing, Bhaktivinoda Thakur fell seriously ill. Just exactly the same fever, the same situation that the daughter went through. Did that stop Bhaktivinoda Thakur? No way. He went back to the courtroom, even though he was sick, finally he got nine months sentence to this Bishaki Sena. So as soon as the sentence was given, the police, medical officers and police were trying to drag him and they cut off this huge long hair of this Bishaki Sena. As soon as this hair was cut, this man fell down like a dead man, completely bereft of energy, and he looked like he was dying, dead. So that proved that all his mystic powers was hidden in his hair. 
he was trying to use this against people etc then to 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 kind of not leave you in curiosity then when bishaki sena went to the prison just after 3 months he was uh, moved to the central jail and he took poison and he died he he committed suicide because no power nothing so he was finished so bhaktivinoda um, thakur's these are like tiny things he did <laughs> bishaki sena so during this time and all these past times were occurring bhaktivinoda thakur daily schedule was like this it is written in the diary of his son lalita prasad bhaktivinoda thakur would come back home after his court duties in the evening around 7 but 7:30 8 o'clock he would go to sleep 10 pm he was up and he had his oil lamp he was lighting his oil lamp and he started writing he would write 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 until 4 am 10 pm to 4 am does it remind you of somebody else who did that <laughs> then at 4 o'clock he would take a little rest till 4:30 then he would get up and then he would chant he would never show his beads he would always hide his beads and chant his rounds then later on he would read some of the scriptures it in the beginning years when bhaktivinoda thakur was doing his research in different religions and he was trying to understand what is the best because he was very sick and tired of this conventional hinduism there was so many contradictions from this demigod worshiping to tantras to he was just like not convinced at all then finally when he uh, heard about lord chaitanya mahaprabhu then he was completely convinced and it was very difficult for bhaktivinoda thakur to even get hold of chaitanya charitamrita or shrimad bhagavatam for many years only later on he could actually get hold of it so he would read whatever was there write commentaries write the songs then during um, like 7 o'clock he would have breakfast he would have quarter glass of milk and some fruits and two chapatis this was his breakfast in the morning and around 8:30 there would be different people because he was district magistrate a lot of people would come to see him with many requests so he would see them all at 8:30 then at 9 uh, 9:30 he would get if nobody was coming he was immediately like reading again then he would go to the court and the interesting thing was his mind and his heart and his soul was completely into planning to into envisioning how to spread lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's movement but carefully you can see in this book bhaktivinoda you know, thakur uh, puts himself in the role of a sweeper he says i am the sweeper in the market place of the holy name why because sweepers keep everything clean and bhaktivinoda you know, thakur was cleaning up the sampradaya by getting rid of all these aul baul and lot of uh, upper sampradayas so he considers himself the sweeper of the marketplace of the holy name and in fact he was so smart that he used to write songs same tune the baul songs which were very popular but the siddhanta the philosophy the tattva was not really in line with lord chaitanya mahaprabhu's teachings he would change the words and then keep the same tune and his songs became so popular that today if you try to find baul songs you will only find bhakti vinod thakur songs so he was very clever to manage everything in a way that will uh, inspire people will attract people then in the court bhakti vinod thakur would perform so excellent that all these english officers were envious of him he could handle 30 to 50 cases in one day it was just impossible for any ordinary magistrate to do that while just think of the daily schedule what he did just early morning etc then he would complete the work which a normal magistrate officer english officer would do in one and a half two hours bhakti vinod thakur would do it in 5 minutes so people just could not understand how is this possible so they would try in different ways to discourage bhakti vinod thakur but bhakti vinod thakur was so absorbed in thinking about something more important that he would never get agitated or disturbed 
he would just do his duty not listen to anything people were saying and continue and then he would come back home in the afternoon have his lunch then again go back he would come around one o'clock have lunch two o'clock he would go back to the court and then serve from two o'clock to five o'clock so this was a daily schedule of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. That was another personal realization for me, um, how Bhakti Vinod Thakur was such an expert time management person. He would manage everything so well. He would do his duties in such excellent ways. He would do his writing in such ways. Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote more than 100 books. Um, I would like to share a little bit about the main instructions of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. The one, one of the fa main services of Bhakti Vinod Thakur at that time was to clear up, re-establish the Gaudiya Vaishnavism and spread the Namahatta. So there's this beautiful song by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And Bodo sukke khabur gai, bodo sukke khabur gai, bodo sukke khabur gai, bodo sukke khabur gai. Sura bikun jete namir hater kula che, khoda nitai, khoda nitai, khoda nitai, khoda nitai. Bhakti Vinod Thakur sings. I am singing the news of great tidings. Lord Nityananda himself has opened a marketplace of the holy name in Surabhi Kunja. And then, the news of its great results is that he is selling the pure holy name in the marketplace for the price of only one's faith. Shraddha Molye Krishna Nam. Just for the sake of your faith, he is willing to give. Oh, my dear brothers, let's go. Let's everybody go and take advantage and bargain for this holy name. Let us go and show our faith and get them. And then Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying, look, all the devotees are becoming attracted. And the proprietor of this marketplace is Lord Nityananda. Oh, brother, go, hurry up. Take the discount. Go and grab hold of this opportunity. Tumi kinbe Krishna naam, tumi kinbe Krishna naam. Dasturi laiba ami purna habe kaam. Khoda nitai, khoda nitai. Khoda nitai, khoda nitai. You will buy the holy name of Krishna. And I will take the commission. And all our desires will be fulfilled. One of the very important instructions of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, it's actually very simple. All the songs of Bhakti Vinod Thakur is very practical. He actually gave practical advices how we can actually channel our family life. There are beautiful songs he wrote. Uh, for example, he, he wrote songs saying how I offer everything, my family, my home, my relatives, my property, my wealth, everything at your lotus feet, O Nanda Kishore. And he wrote several songs to channel everything we have, always thinking of Krishna. So in this uh, song of Nadi Yagodru Me Nityananda Mahajan, he actually gives the whole essential uh, teachings and principles in this song. We'll sing a few lines and then we will read the, what's the essence of the song. Nadiya, Nadiya. Nadiya Godru me Nityananda Mahajan Pati Ache Namahata Jeevera Karan Nadiya Godru me Nityananda Mahajan Pati Ache Namahata Jeevera Karan So in the island of Godruma, 
magnanimous Lord Nityananda has opened up the marketplace of the holy name which is meant for the deliverance of all fallen souls shraddhavan jana he shraddhavan jana he shraddhavan jana he o oh, people of faith o oh, people of faith by the order of lord goranga o oh, brothers i beg these three requests of you chant hari krishna worship krishna and teach others about krishna simple instructions of bhaktivinoda thakur and then be careful to remain free from offenses just take the holy name of lord krishna krishna mata krishna pita krishna dana pran krishna mata krishna pita krishna dana pran krishna is your mother krishna is your father krishna is the treasure of your life then giving up all sinful activities carry on your worldly duties only in relation to lord krishna the showing of compassion to other souls by loudly chanting the holy name of krishna is the essence of all forms of religion so this is the concise song which all the teachings of bhaktivinoda thakur is is there and bhaktivinoda thakur was also very expert to say very heavy things very intense things in a very joyful way he would actually put together songs in in tunes which was like everybody could dance children could dance adults could dance all people could like enjoy the song and and the people who were engrossed in youthful ears and they are all um, attracted by um, materialistic desires even they could enjoy this song so he was very expert in making the philosophy in making this very sophisticated siddhanta of shrimad bhagavatam flow like a soft river through his songs there is one particular song which is uh, which is quite a popular song vishnu jana swami made it very popular um in that song bhaktino thakur says quite a lot of preachy heavy things but the tune of the song is so sweet it's so joyful and it, it, we we will just go through that okay bol hari bol bol hari bol manera anand bai bol hari bol bol hari bol bol hari bol chant the name of lord hari with blissful minds chant the names of hari chant the name of hari birth after birth in happiness chant the name of hari birth after birth i mean it's it's a, it's, a, it's a heavy thing to hear but he sings it in a happy way then bol hari bol bol hari bol manava janma pe bol hari bol सुखे थको दुखे थको बोल हरि बोल बोल हरि बोल बोल हरि बोल चैन द होली नेम्स ऑफ हरि ओ ब्रदर्स यू हैव अटेन द ह्यूमन बर्थ नाउ चैन द नेम ऑफ हरि वेदर यू आर इन हैप्पीनेस और इन डिस्ट्रेस चैन द नेम ऑफ हरि बोल हरि बोल बोल हरि बोल sampade vipade bhai bol hari bol grihe thako vane thako bol hari bol krishna ra samsar taki bol hari bol bol hari bol bol hari bol chant the names of hari o oh brothers whether in prosperity or misfortune chant the names of hari whether you live at home or you live in the forest chant the name of hari bol hari bol bol hari bol asat sang chaadi bai bol hari bol bol hari bol bol hari bol vaishnava charane padi bol hari bol o oh brothers give up the association of non devotees and chant the names of hari chant the names of hari falling at the lotus feet of vaishnavas chant the names of hari two main instructions give up bad association 
fall at the feet of Vaishnavas. Bol Hari Bo. So enthusiastic, so optimistic. So th this is the last stanza of this song, which was popularized by Vishnu Jan Maharaj. I would like all of us to sing this together. And uh, Vishnu Jan Swami would sing it in a slightly different tune. You have all heard it, I think. Gaur Nityananda Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol 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 Gaur Gada Dara 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 Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Gaur Advaita 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 Bol Hari Bol Hari Bol Bol Hari Bol Bol Hari Bol Bol Hari Beautiful song, no? So, talking about the marketplace of the holy name, talking about the mercy of Vaishnavacharyas, we're actually being given this opportunity again this year, beginning from tomorrow, is Purushottam month. Purushottam month is a very special month because it is the month of Krishna. It's the favorite month of Sri Krishna. Purushottam month is considered to be the most auspicious of all the months. More than Vaishak, more than Kartik. And it is also called Adikamas. Adikamas means extra month. What does it mean extra month? Whatever is done during Purushottam month multiplies thousands of times. And uh, there are different recommendations what all you could do. But I will only say let's go and bargain. <laughs> so that we can actually buy the holy name with the currency of our faith. And, and uh, some devotees take up some vows to study Srimad Bhagavatam, and uh, some devotees take up vows to chant extra rounds, and many, many, many types of things. Whatever can be done, uh, we can bargain and take the opportunity to get a great discount on the holy name. So thank you very much. Shri Shri Gadadara Pandit Disappearance Day Mahamautava Ki Satchidananda Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Disappearance Day Mahamautava Ki Ananda Koti Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Ki Itai Go Premanande Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.